it is October the 21st 2014 <clears throat> and what I'm going to do tonight and hopefully you'll enjoy it is I'm going to show you how all of these Pete Millet programs work um, I have made a number of videos on how to configure it with the uh, HP 8903 so I think that's sufficient but nowhere on YouTube is there a uh, set of a, a video with a set of all of these uh, programs running it's got one here called power v2 frequency response v2 voltage v2 THD v2 I guess it's version 2 and we'll run them all and uh, they run pretty quick and what we'll be running them on tonight is uh, an amplifier that I've used so many times, the uh, Dynaco Mark III. It has the new board in it. It doesn't have the original board with the 6AN8. And this little amplifier built in 1977, which is a uh, clone of a Macintosh channel out of a MA230 with a Mac uh, output transformer. It used to use 70, 7591s, but I've used uh, these EL34s and 6L6s, KT88s, etc. It uses a 12AU7 and a 12AT7. Very nice little lamp. Had that thing a long time. Built it for a center channel. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is, we'll start here by running power. Now, what this does is right now I've got it, I've got the output of the uh, 8903 run into this box that I've shown built before so I use all of the little things that I build into this amp and what I do is I've got it adjusted uh, such that when I move it from here over to here I can adjust it down so that I'm always running exactly the same power level so that we're testing them both at the same the same rate and then these are the dummy loads up here I just gotta remember to always flip that that's the right channel and when we're testing the other amp We'll be testing it at the left channel. Those are one percent resistors, so everything is uh, is working real well. Um, I'm moving the camera around like this instead of just having it fixed because there's so many things to look at at once. Uh, of course, the screen here, the display, uh, the harmonic profile on running frequency response is just really nice to look at. It's also nice to see where it starts to clip, and then we can also monitor the voltage up here. But the voltage can also be monitored within it uh, right here in these displays. Well, we're going to start at 100 millivolts. We're going to end the level at, at 4 volts. I'm going to change that to 4. Uh, test frequency is a kilohertz. Points per decade, I'm going to change to 10. That gives us a bit smoother display. Maximum THD, let's just make it 4%. And our load is 8 ohms so that all of our power will be correct and then we say start and here it'll run. It'll all run pretty quick. But see over here, here the generator level 1.1, 0.13 power 0.66 watts and here's our trace coming across here. Okay now while it's nice and smooth, see here's our display on the oscilloscope you'll see it, uh, the amplitude rising frequency stayed the same, amplitudes continuing to rise. Here it is again, here's our power, 10 watts, THC 0.09.15. See it's starting to come up here, 25 watts, 40 watts, and then all of a sudden it starts clipping really hard when it overdrives it severely. And there it is, I'm sure you can hear that. So the Dynaco Mark III goes kapui at 10, 20, 30, 40, about 42 watts. Now this is its maximum, but that was practically a square wave output. So there's that one. Now we're going to compare it, and I'm not trying to compare to make one good or bad, but just to compare, just for the sake of using it, I'm going to switch our load, and then i got to adjust this back down to uh, we have the same amount of power coming out of it um, and uh, 
otherwise we won't be testing them the same okay now we're all set up to test the second amp and then we say we just hit we're going to leave everything the same of course we just hit uh, trace 2 right here and it'll start again and we'll see the second trace in a different color and there it comes across with a blue right down here screeching across there I think it comes up with like one point per decade, but that is that is so fast and so crude that uh, you don't get much of a smooth display. Now this one's going to um, not put out as much power before it goes straight up because it's only rated at uh, 30 watts. It's doing pretty good there. See, there's its display. A little bit more there, starting to. There it is. See, it took, a, it took an upward dive right there, 10, 20, there's uh, be 30 watts. This is only a half percent distortion right here. So it did darken here as good. It fell, it fell completely apart at 40 watts right there. It started squaring off. So that is the power uh, routine running. Okay. Now let's go to the next one. Ready to exit? Yes. Okay, frequency response. They both do really well here. Okay, uh, points per decade. I think I ran that up to about five. I think that made a little bit smoother one without it uh, taking too much trouble. Let's run this up to 50 kilohertz so we get a, you know, a real nice display here and say start. Now this is the little, that's this little amp again. Reference level okay. See, our reference level is telling us right here 14 and a half volts. That's about 25 watts. Square that divided by 8. See, there's the same number up there. So uh, the little thing is quite accurate. Real pleased when we say okay. That's why I made these adjustments over here so that I drive both amplifiers to the same power level. And there it is coming across right there. And it's giving us uh, um, frequency response in dB nice and flat you can see that you can see that nice yellow trace coming across there without too much glare we're up to uh, okay, there it is starting to dive a little bit takes a little bit of a dive at 10 kilohertz there's 20 kilohertz 30 see and it stopped at 30 kilohertz even though we had it configured to 50 so whatever so it says that we're down about the 3 dB at uh, 30 kilohertz. Okay, now we can move this one back over to here. Don't forget to switch our load and run this one back up to uh, 925 so that we're putting out the same power again. And uh, we'll run trace two. So now we're running uh, the Dynaco. Better watch where I'm putting my finger. Uh -huh. There's the, See, it's coming across here with a blue trace. I'm doing this because I've never seen anybody document running all these little programs. And if you run them and they're different, then let us know. You know, if you've got better ways of running them, if you're more experienced at it, look here at the harmonic profile because we're changing frequency. So you can see the harmonics coming across. There it is. In this case, the um, at 25 watts, the um, the Dynaco outperforms the little uh, Macintosh clone. It's only down uh, one dB at uh, 30 kilohertz. Pretty darn good, huh? So there you go. Okay, the next one is um, voltage. We may not have to do both of them. We'll leave, we'll leave it on the uh, on the Dynaco. Okay, points per decade, uh, 10, max THD, uh, start level 100 millivolts, end level. Let's change that to four because it just it just gets really weird. And we'll change the THD to four, and you'll see what this one does. Uh, start. I don't want to mess up. It's easy to make a mistake. There it is. It's all going to be down here close to zero. 
this is going to be the uh, power output uh, let's see with varying voltage input and it'll tell us let's see there's our generator level which we can't actually read off directly because we've got it we've got it attenuated right here too so we got a little bit of problem there there's our power so it's doing pretty good below a half percent it by the way it's all at one kilohertz until right there it takes a huge this one the uh, the graduations are not really good but it's, it's, it's going along pretty good until we overdrive it and it squares off and of course that's what it looks like whoops well you didn't get to see that very long did you okay that's the voltage one yes now the one that's really I think the one that's really worth is THD let's put our stop frequency up at uh, 50 kilohertz again and our points per decade to at least 10 and we'll just say start and it'll say is the reference level okay see right there the reference level okay and we're reading out here 14.46 verifying that up here For there the same one 13.35 13.34 this one reads it as 13.46 whatever they're close enough and we say okay and we let this guy run. This, uh, this is the Dynaco THD. Again, it, it, it's so nice to be able in, to, be, to be in the shop and be able to see all of it at once by glancing around. It's kind of hard to show on uh, with a camera. But uh, you'll see here in just a minute when it starts coming up. It's nice to see the, uh, the harmonic profile come across. I guess this is kind of like watching water boil or something, but uh, it doesn't take too long. When you uh, some of them you can put in 100 points per decade right here, and it'll take a long time, but it makes a really nice smooth uh, graft, which uh, I believe is quite accurate. I have confidence in it. Well, it starts out at one percent. The Dynaco starts at one percent at 20 hertz. Watch the harmonic profile start to come across here as the fundamental frequency is changing and you, and you see all the harmonics coming in there. Truly, really, uh, I think that's really pretty. And it's, uh, it scans up just enough that it it's, likes to stay in, in sync almost. Uh, the timing is good between all of them. Well, there it is right there. It's actually not bad. See, it's one percent at 20 hertz. It's down here below a half percent from 100 from 90 and about uh, uh, 80 hertz up to uh, about uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, about 5 kilohertz. Then it starts to rise up to three percent at uh, at, uh, at full power that we're rated it at 25 watts or so. But that's that one okay now let's move it just for fun back to this one turn our turn this back down so this this one uh, requires less drive is is the problem that's why that's why we have to do this and uh, so that so that we're getting so that we're measuring the same thing each time oh, it's supposed to be 690 sorry 6 70 80 690 and then we gotta switch our dummy load. And then we say trace two. And here it comes. So you can see the you can see it's a real low frequency here. Push that so it didn't even really shut off. It's always trying to save its screen. They're a little paranoid about it, I think. But you can see the frequency increasing. And here's its display, the little blue line down there. It's considerably better. It's THD. It's less than a half percent at 14.46 volts. So, you know, you square that and divide it by H, you get like 25 watts. 
and so you can see the frequency 399 Hertz THD is 0.11 so it's all real-time and there it is coming across so we're running them both at the same power level I'm having to use uh, this up here I'll show you some of the things that I've made videos of I'll use the uh, the attenuated output so it doesn't drive my scope off the uh, trace off the screen so I do use these things I do use this this is really quite handy to have and uh, here it comes across and this will be all four of the Pete Millet programs running on the uh, 8903 I, th I think that 8903 is, is the instrument to have for, uh, for audio and there it is so it does about 0.4 percent at uh, 20, and it never it gets up to about 0.85. I guess I would read it at that. Well, let's see, 0.86. See, that's its last point plotted um, at uh, 25 watts. And then you can do two more traces, and then you can change the start-stop frequency, the points per decade. Uh, some of them won't let you put 100 points in. I don't remember which ones it is, but that's the THD, the voltage, the frequency response, and the power. That's all four that I know of. If there's more out there, I would love to have them. So I hope this helps preserve these magnificent old 8903s. So you see, when both, when these two lights are on, then it then it's in uh, remote mode. It's being controlled remotely, and it all runs through this USB cable up to a. Uh, I don't remember the number of the device on the back. If you want to put it back in local mode, you just press this, and then you can change it to whatever you want. Like if I wanted to change the amplitude, I'd say I'd put it in the local, I'd say amplitude uh, 2 volts. And then when I go back down here to my mouse and, and click on it again, this light will come back on and then throw it back into uh, remote control mode, and it's controlled by the, uh, the PC. So there you go. That's... Uh, that's about all I know about this 8903 and, uh, and, and Pete's uh, uh, programs, but uh, they're a lot of fun. Hope, hope you enjoy it. These two old uh, amplifiers right here. I think they both sound great.